Hi everybody, I hope you're all well. Um, another little insert of ideas from me using Cosmos and Cadence and products like that. How to, what if, all those little things. Um, I hope you managed to see some of the others in the series, you know. But just when you buy a product, it's really important that you get some aftercare. And I think when you see myself and David and Mel, Stephanie, and Amanda all do these little ones and Hannah you know they all do their techniques together and each one of us show you and bring you something different so I hope that helps you because I know it helps me when I come here and watch so I bought some of the canvas that they sell on a roll and I love this stuff because I can make my own canvas shapes sizes you name it so um, it's primed on one side and unprimed on the other and it is quite easy to see it's available on the website but i'm going to team that with some of the other stuff so i'm going to get like a painterly effect using my cosmos creating my own little coasters this could be a canvas it could be anything a wall hanging anything so i've got a blank coaster or in my case it was a beer mat sorry and what you do is just make sure and you can feel, if you go like that, you'll see the, cam the primer come off. So that's the top. And all you do is you glue all the way around. I've done one. Glue it to the edge because I'll tell you why. I tried it folding it all over and it got a little bit bulky and it wasn't what I wanted. So you glue all to the edge and you glue off the edge. So I'll just show you with this. So when you're doing that, you push it on and you push it right off the edge don't worry too much about this because i'll tell you why i've noticed that when i'm gluing it if i do too much glue in the middle it puckers i don't want that so i just tend to do all the corners push it to the corner leave it to dry not even not even 10 minutes really and it's still now what you can do there's two things you can do you can use a bone folder to just make sure that it's all really set down at the sides like that and even at the sides like that and then cut it. So I've done that so you, you're not bored. So here we can see I've still got a little bit there but what I can get is a nail file and just rub that off but I'm, I'm going to do that at the end because I'm going to ink these. So I've got a series of four and this is what I like to do. I like to put them all together because I like them as a series. Okay, so I'll put them all together. Now what you can do is just to keep them together because you get a little bit, well, if you're like me, I go flicking paint everywhere, you know. Um, and the wonderful Andrew has to run around looking for where I've got, where I've got all my artwork because I'm flicking it all over the table. So I thought rather than making work, I'll stick these together. Andrew is a wonderful guy who does all our stuff. He's, he's amazing. And not only that, he's a really nice lad as well. So, yeah, he's not paying me. Right, so, he's such a nice lad. Um, so I've just done some really, really easy, you know, not sticky tape. You can, if it is sticky masking tape, take it off on your clothes first. I nearly said take your clothes off. No, but don't do that. No, keep them on. Um, so I've got them together like that and there's a reason I'm doing this and it's because I want to create one image but then cut it up. So what you could do rather than do it like that is do the first one like I have all on one and then cut it down. And then what, that ha what happens then is you really don't have a feeling of where the ends are and everything. And I do this regular, especially with ATCs. And I've got another video showing you that one. So on here, I'm going to get my Cosmos. I do love this paint. I really do. And I'm going to get the Ecru. Give it a good stir. Make sure that the grit is all embodied into it. And I'm just going to go. Now, remember I said that there is a side to this. I've got some colour on the paint I really don't care it really doesn't matter there's um, a prime side and an unprimed side you can use either but the prime side is used uh, as a gesso base so as you can see I'm really being neat you know sometimes people say to me they look at my work and they go what is she doing 
And at the end, they go, how did she just do that? And that's what it's about. I get that all the time. Everybody here does it. What's she doing here? And it's because I trust the process, but it's all about experimenting. And that's what I hope you, you're going to get from this. Now, I've got the Ecru down, which is a light colour. I'm going to go in with, it's got to be done, turquoise. Now, that'll be enough. I don't want any more than that. How crazy is that? You've got to look at the size of the bottle. You'll be here forever. I've got a clean brush and a, and, um, a brush that's already got the Ecru on. So I'm going to do just... So I've got different textures, right? So bring that in. Try as much as you can to be um, keeping the colour contained because you can add it. Then go back to my other brush and just... And hopefully you can hear it. It's got a great sound. It's like sandpaper. So I'm just adding some to that. Now, I have got a slight blue tinge to this, but it really doesn't matter. And what I would say, I did this on TV the other day and the amount of people said, oh, I, love, I, I like the finished bit, the, the messy bit, clean up. I said, I know, this is why I do it. So get your an, a spare bit. I've done it on the other side, which is fine. And clean your brush. And then now I'm not introducing too much white uh, water. Sorry, excuse me. So then I've got that. I'm going to go in with a little bit of grey. So I'm going to get another brush. Just going to clean that off. So anything that's residue on it will be off. And this is because I'm using a darker colour. So I don't want it too heavy. But again, I'm not being overly... Well, you can tell I'm not being neat. I'm a blooming neck. I'm not now renowned for being neat, but I'm scrubbing that off there. So scrub all that off. Get rid of, get the all the paint off. Just be careful you don't make it into like a, a fuzzy brush, because that does happen. And then I'm going to get the blue, and I'm just going to dry brush it in because the white underneath the ecru is starting to dry but it's sort of still movable. You have to work pretty fast with this, but you can use your mediums like your extenders on it, but that's for another video. So there we go. Uh, it looks awful. It, oh, that looks terrible. But stay with it, stay with it. Uh, honestly, stay with it. So got that out there. And now I'm going to go in with my brown brush. So I've got the brown terracotta colour and this is where I'm going to go to the areas pretty fast that I haven't got the colour on then I'm going to go in with my white brush and I'm just going to blend that in a little bit you might need a little bit more white that's fine and then just there we go so I'm blending it as, as I go so I don't want it to be overpowered if you add this colour to everything, then they'll all have the same tone. If I start adding white to this now, I would have a stark base and it'd look completely different. So if you keep to the same undertone, you'll have the same hue and that means colour. So just a little bit here and a little bit here and then blend. And there's no, honestly, there's, I, I am not, clever with this this is all about you experimenting so a little bit more I hope this doesn't take too long because I want to finish I, I, I don't like it to be too long because I want to, you to see it finished so I like to keep these little videos short for you so we've got that which I quite like it's quite nice it's getting there so yeah I'm happy about that so now what we do is we do some mixing of colours. So I'm going to put the blue here, the turquoise, and I'm going to mix it with a tiny bit of the ecru. So that I've got, instead of a blend, I've got a shaded colour, mixed colour, sorry. So it's got a blue undertone. Now I know you might think of contaminating the paint, but it's that thick, heavy bodied paint that it really doesn't, it doesn't contaminate the other paint. It's when it's runny that it does that. And I'm just going to put in 
So final sort of horizontal and vertical lines. I'm not being too neat. I don't want them sort of very neat at all. I just want them to be there. Blend. And then I'm going to get a terracotta with it and I'm going to get a lovely brownie colour, almost like a rust. And it's a green, this, a bit more. And I could add the grey with it as well and we'd get an even darker colour. So let's try it. There we go. So we get another tone now. I'm just going to put that near. There we go. So clean off. You seem to get drawn to different colours and I, I'm one for that and I love that because I know that each colour is going to play safe for me. So I, I do love doing that. So I'm just going to pounce the colour on there and I'll do the same on this. Just to break up any sort of very strong lines that I don't want and the pouncing is similar to adding white paint but it's much more um, like pointillism which means dots or points so there we go now if it is two pointer flick and you get a drag out colour so it's more of a dry brush now I think the last thing I need to do with this is a little bit more of the dark green brown sort of colour. Now you can do this with um, these acrylic rods, you can do them with anything round pencils or anything but let's see what this looks like. Now I'm using, yep yeah, that's quite nice, so you get the paint off and I'm just going to do And all it is, is an acrylic rod. You can get the end of your paintbrush. You don't have to use these, but they are really handy and we're hoping to bring them soon. So I've just got one on each. And if you want a little bit more, you can go back in and just press in lightly. So we've got one on each. Now I've got another colour and I've got some different sizes. Now, this could be the end of a paintbrush, it could be an embossing tool, it could be anything like that. I just want to show you what you can do with really simple paints. Um, not simple colors, sorry, that was, that's a better. Simple colors and simple techniques. So I'm going to put three of them on there and I'm going to change the direction but you can change the direction anyway just by turning these round and then three there and then three here I am not thinking about where these are going I am just plopping them down or plonking whatever you want to call it if you've got a bit of a dodgy one like that just go back in it's fine there and sometimes you can get two out of it and it's nice because you get a secondary colour. Then the last bit, all we need to do now is a little bit of black. I've got a little bit of black there. And I have got a, a rigger brush. You need a fine line. You can do it. I'm going to use a little dot one. I'll just show you how small it is. And I'm just going to put in one black dot there. Only one on each in the middle. I know you'll be able to see that because of the amazing Andrew. So a black dot in these really brings it powerful. And then a car, let me see. There it is, one that I haven't glued. So I've got my um, card. It could be any piece of card. It could be this, it could be anything. And I'm just going to run it through my black. So I'll just show you there. Okay, just run it through my black. And I'm just going to dissect a bit more.
and it becomes a bit like the old 70s Sputnik. Oh, right, if that happens, whip it up and do a black dot. It will happen, but it doesn't, it really doesn't matter. So I'm going to get that and I'm going to change that into a spot. So that was the paint dropped, but it really doesn't matter. And then I'm just going to slim down this because I think it's gone a bit gloopy on the edges. So so now what I'm going to do is just, and it's all done then, just going to do it with the, the teal colour. And we're just going to break up the teal with that's that and then the last thing we're going to do is just put a little bit of blob there like that clean your brush and i'm just going to put in white next to the black but it's not a white per se it's it's the ecru so it's not too bright does its trick let it mix with the others and then bob your uncle's fanny's your aunt and I will just take these apart and we'll take these apart we can ink the edges if you wish and then we've done it all together so it's got to match but what we have got are four separate pieces of artwork that you could put in a frame or you could put in your coasters you need to cover them with a protective layer but they actually look fantastic especially if i put them on the black to show you how wonderful now it's a cosmos paint just with ends of like tools done i hope you enjoyed that I love doing stuff like this because I'm mixing what I've already got with new products and I'm really extending the ideas. I'm getting the ends of my tools and plonking stuff down. And I told you at the beginning how disgraceful it looked. But if you trust the process and just carry on, you know, you've got little mini works of art. I mean, who doesn't like them? I do. I don't often like my work, but I do. Anyway, enough of that. I hope you can join me for the next part of the series where we look still at the same products of looking at expand, expanding ideas and techniques and let's see what else we can do. I really look forward to seeing what you do with these because you inspire me so much. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. If you want to see more from Highlight Crafts, make sure you click the like button. Subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below and click the bell icon to receive notifications of all of our future content. You can also click here to see our latest video or click here to see more videos like this one.